Video 15 is about calculating the mean or average of different structural anatomical images once they've been normalized. Now, this step is not actually necessary. It's just an interesting one to do for two reasons. Firstly, so that you can see how even the average of just a small number of structural images looks quite uh, blurry and shows the limitations of, of normalization and how you lose um, spatial accuracy, but also it introduces um, the uh, image calculator and performing simple um, manipulations on different images such as taking the average and entering an evaluated expression. It's useful to know it exists even if you don't do it often. Let's go back to the results now because uh, previously we didn't look very much at the um, where you could overlay data because we didn't really have a very good image to put everything on. So what I've done here is select the SPM.mat. We've only defined one contrast so far, and I've just gone in with a standard T and K value. Sorry, where T is the, uh, the, the height threshold, the probability that's corrected, and K is the extent threshold, um, which we set to zero voxels to show everything rather than just large clusters. And what we've said is we can overlay that data on slices or, or sections. Um, but now what we can do when it comes to sections is we can choose um, well any one of our participants and use the WS, the warped structural image. And this is going to give us a better idea. It's still a little bit misleading because these statistics are across all five participants. So to put it on just one participant's brain is not the best thing to do. Um, but it's it's quite useful nonetheless um, because we get a much better idea and, and, and we're using a high quality image so we can see the various structures and what we can even do here is um, if I can remember how it works uh, go atlas enable using north neuromorphometrics and now when we do this we get to display labels and neuromorphometrics so here we just get a little text saying where we are and so that's quite good it's to click around someone's brain and just get a get an approximation of where we are uh, it's quite good for learning neuroanatomy as well but there are all these caveats so this is approximate based on lots of people before we go much further with this i want to do uh, an honest image so i'm going to go ahead and press the mcalc button um, what i want to do is calculate the um, average of our, our participants uh, structural images so the input images here we got we've got this is the image calculator imcalc comes up in the batch editor and it wants to know what images do you want to perform some calculations on uh, what you want to do with that and what what is is the uh, calculation you want to do so the input images are are, are five st structural images so i go for participant 10 structural warp structural participant 11 warp structural participant 12 warp structural participant 13 warp structural participant 14 warp structural just check i've got the right ones the warp structural 160s 10 11 12 13 14. Um, the output file name it just says output i'm going to change that and it's I'm going to call it 010 to 014 mean structural. Okay, and the output directory, <laughs> I think the best place to put it is actually group stats, actually, because that's where we'll, we'll, be, we'll be overlaying. Um, so I just clicked on that single dot to mean that directory. And then we have the expression. This might seem intimidating, actually very easy, because we just look to the contextual help at the bottom and it uh, gives lots of examples. So I can specify the expression. And I can just do, this is just a, a, an evaluated MATLAB expression where the different images are just I1, I2, I3, etc. So. To, to make a, a, a mean of the images, the example is given here. And you could just put I1 plus I2 
um, plus i3 plus i4 plus i5 uh, divided by 5. So as long as the i1 up to i5 is all in brackets, it'll sum those and then divide by 5 and we'll get the mean. You could also do 0.5 times i1 plus 0.5 times, no, no, 0.2 times i1 plus 0.2 times i2. But this this will work, so let's click OK and that should be fine. And additional variables, none. Uh, options, no. Um, no implicit masking, no, and interpolation, let's just do as high quality as possible. Let's quickly, quickly run that. Again, it's very quick to do, and now we can see what we've done by clicking on the display button. And in our group stats, we have what we call our participant 10 to 14 mean structural, and I can now select that load it and in here this is the, the 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 mean of our participants so if we're going to to look at group data five people's data the average of it we should really overlay it on the average brain so we don't make the mistake of saying oh we definitely have this in a particular structure when we don't it still actually looks quite good and shows you that the warping process works very well but there you go that is a nice um, warped mean of, of, of warps that we can use for our overlays. As I said at the beginning, this is not an essential step. It is just useful and informative to see what it looks like when you take the mean of a small number of images and it gives you pause when you're overlaying structural images with statistical blobs and being very confident about where foci are in anatomical terms. And it's also useful to understand how the image processing with the calculator works, entering evaluated expressions. So even if you don't use this now and don't remember at all, keep this one saved for future use.